Good morning, everybody. My name is Ryan Wasser. Uh, I'm a tutor at Northampton Community College as well as Westchester University. Uh, I'm going to be recording a video today for uh, prospective and future students going into university settings as well as their parents uh, because I feel like there's a lot of change going on in academia at the moment that needs to be addressed uh, that that either isn't being addressed or when it is being addressed it's being done in such a way as to let's say villainize those who would critique the institution um, so I'm gonna try and keep this as short as possible I found most people don't like to watch things once they go over, let's say, 10 minutes. So I'm gonna kind of try and keep this condensed. Before I begin, a little bit about me. Uh, as I noted, I'm a tutor at both Northampton and Westchester University. I've got my master's degree in English studies, particularly an area called writing, teaching, and criticism. And I'm currently about to get my second master's in philosophy. I specialize in, um, well, I would say continental existential philosophy, but I'm specifically a Heideggerian. I look at hermeneutics. Uh, so I'm almost in kind of this weird post-philosophy space. Um, uh, from a professional standpoint, I did almost a decade in the military. My first enlistment was in the Air Force as an aircraft inspection technician. I was called MDT. Uh, I got my associate's degree while I was in. And um, then I transferred into the Army as a 13 box forward observer. I uh, did a couple of deployments with the Army. So uh, I've got a pretty wide range of experience um, so what am, what am I doing here? The main question is what's going on in campuses and uh, potentially who should go to college. And when I say who should go to college, that's not me trying to differentiate and say some people shouldn't, some people should, you know, people aren't qualified for this, that, or the other thing. It's really just a question that's going to be probing to see where people's interests lie. Um, and even folks who maybe I qualify as shouldn't going to college, that's not to say that they shouldn't pursue learning after the fact. I think everybody after they graduate high school or get their GED or whatever they end up doing, they should continue learning uh, after they get that uh, diploma. Uh, autodidactism is a thing. Uh, most of the best learning I've done uh, has been outside the classroom, has been reading great works, has been reading uh, difficult philosophical texts, has been reading uh, things I don't necessarily agree with on my own time. And everybody can do that, and I highly suggest it. Um, so that's, that's that. Now, the first thing I want to discuss, and the first demographic I want to kind of orient myself towards, excuse me, or, or be oriented in such a way towards, is, uh, <clears throat> is are the students. Um, I know for a fact when I was in high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought college was just a thing to do. We still kind of have that myth that the only way to get forward in life is to go to college, get a degree, get a job, yada, yada, yada. We have all heard that story. Um, I would ask students to really, really, really sit down and think. And when I mean think, I don't mean put a little bit of thought into it and jump off. I mean circumambulate around the thought uh, and really consider it, what it is that you're looking for out of life. And that's hard to do at 17. Uh, God, when I was 17, all I wanted to do was be an artist. Who hasn't had that moment, you know? Um, you know, I, I hadn't considered what was meaningful in my life or what was going to be meaningful. Um, and usually what it comes down to, this is based on my experience, is people either want to have money or they want to do a thing, a particular thing. And most times those things, uh, <laughs> they're not as interrelated as we'd like to think they are. You know, I'm an English guy, I'm a philosophy guy. I'm never gonna get rich doing either one of those things. Um, but the benefit to me doing these things is that I get to do what I love to do every day for an amount of money that is, let's say, survivable. And of course, my military pension doesn't hurt that, but you know, it's 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 a manageable situation. I'm never going to get rich though, so I would ask students to sit down and uh, really consider what it is that they want. Do you want money? Do you, you know, do you like fishing? Do you have the capability to be a professional fisherman? Well, if not, and you like to fish, then it's going to behoove you to get a job that can finance that thing that you like to do. 
you know, if you go into the universities, you have to be prepared for the fact that outside of like the STEM fields, the career field you're going into isn't going to give you that six figure salary that you want. It's not going to give you that opportunity to live in this, that, and the other place, you know, the bougie, high scale cities, even though they're seeing some troubles right now that you'd like them to, unless you're the elite. And, uh, you know, most people don't exist in the elite when it comes to performative skills. You know, we're all kind of somewhere in this gradient, you know. So um, that's the first thing. Students should sit down before they even decide to go to college, but sometimes it's too late for that, and really think about what it is that they want. You know, a lot of people uh, kind of get on Jordan Peterson for arguing that people need to have a goal in life, but that's actually a very very important thing. You need to dictate to yourself, this is what I'd like to do. This is the reality of that situation. Is that is where I'm going, or excuse me, is where I am, this is terribly worded, going to get me to where I want to go, and is that where, really where I want to go? Um, so the second thing I'd also like to point out is that when you get the university settings, and a lot of people have pointed this out, Jonathan Haidt most, you know, prolifically, but other individuals, um, Coleman, uh, uh, can't remember his first name, um, have pointed out that the institutions themselves are, let's say, ideologically aligned with, uh, let's say, liberal left-wing politics. And that makes sense. You know, uh, liberalism is uh, correlated with creativity uh, and intellect, uh, according to like personality theory and moral foundations theory. So it makes sense that that's going to end up there, but you have to be aware of that. You have to be aware of your own, let's say, temperament. I'm, you know, it's weird. You don't meet too many gay guys who are in the centrist, leaning towards conservative line of thought. It's becoming more, uh, you know, common, but not as common as it was. You know, it's, it, 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 it can be a hostile environment if your temperament doesn't match up with that environment. Um, and that's not to denigrate the professors that are teaching. Uh, some of the best professors I've had, my thesis director, we disagreed on everything, everything. But she was one of the greatest influences in my academic career. Shout out to Dr. Mary Perry. She's a, she's a great, great professor. And there's other professors too, you know, uh, Dr. Margaret Irvin from the Writing Center where I work at in Westchester. We don't agree on a single thing. <laughs> We're currently butting heads over the... Uh, right to our own language uh, doctrine that we've instituted in our writing center uh, as to what exactly that means. I'm not going to get into that here, but the fact of the matter is people with different views can coordinate with each other, but you need to be aware of that. And you need to be aware of the fact that your professors are people too. They have their own temperaments. They have their own opinions. They're not the end all be all of everything. You know, once you get into the university setting, especially 300, 400, 500, 600 level courses, you're less teacher-student, and you're closer to peers, okay? So um, that's, that's, that's something I wanted to point out, and that's, that applies to me, too. As I've noted, I tend to be more towards the center of the stick uh, when it comes to uh, political temperament, uh, moral temperament. Uh, I'm not immune to ideology. I'm not immune to opinion, and a lot of this is probably going to be taken out of context and held against me, possibly, uh, because of that. So <laughs> it's just the way things kind of are. Now to parents. Um, parents I've found over the course of the last 20 years have really kind of just gotten into this really, I don't say this in a bad way, you know, it kind of sounds that way, apathetic attitude towards college. Um, when I first went to Wilkes University many, many years ago, which I did horribly at uh, my first two semesters, you know, my parents were in on every single step of the process. Um, hell, they even researched my uh, section director, uh, Dr. Dennis Hupchuk of Wilkes University, great historian, uh, researched the Balkan Wars, got some good books. You know, they knew everything about Dr. Hupchuk. They knew uh, everything about Dr. Gar, my sociology professor. Like, they, they actively were involved in my educative experience. Um, and I know that's not necessarily as easy as it sounds. Not everybody has that opportunity, but you don't have the luxury of not being involved with that. Because at the rate we're going, 
the schools are, for as much as I love them, as much as I love being in academia, they're definitely leading into one area. And uh, by aligning themselves in one particular area, they're actually kind of incidentally abdicating, excuse me, abdicating their, their telos, which is the pursuit of truth. And you can only really get that by having a well-rounded perspective on all issues, you know? So I would uh, highly suggest that you investigate, or not even investigate, just really get to know the curriculum in the school that your student is going to, you know? If all of a sudden your school has a mission statement that's dedicated to truth, I think that is the primary mission of the academic setting. But they change it to a mission statement that, let's say, is primarily concerned with social justice. Well, does that align with your values? Does that align with your students' values? Do you think that's healthy? I've got my own particular arguments about that, but I find it weird when schools kind of change their mission on the sneak tip, you know? They kind of do that under the radar, you know? And policies change along with that. And it's not so much a question of whether or not social justice is a good thing or a bad thing, of course. Justice in the social sense is an admirable goal, but how does that align with the mission of the university? Um, I might do a video later on uh, about just that issue, but it's question. It's a question you have to ask. Um, on that note, yeah, it's 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 super important before your student goes to college to pay attention to what the mission of your school is. I love Westchester. I've I got my bachelor's degree at Westchester. I got my first master's degree at Westchester. I'm getting my philosophy degree at Westchester. But take the English department, for example. Um, I think we had something like 73 individuals in the professoriate uh, when I graduated my master's degree. Um, there was only one individual who could be construed as a conservative or conservatively aligned professor. And there were somewhere around the range of, I think, last count of half is something like 48 uh, percent of the professoriate identifying with um, or being a specialist in some kind of critical theory, Marxist theory, queer theory. You know, it's all derived from Marxist theory for the most part. And that's fine. But for students who don't pay attention to that, you're getting a very one-sided education. You know, you go through critical theory, you're only going to get Althusser, and you're only going to get Butler, you're not going to get Freud, um, and you're not going to get different psychoanalysts. Heck, you're not even going to, you're only going to get a brief dusting of Du Bois. I don't understand how that got left out. You know, it's just, I want you to pay attention to what's going on in the school your students attending. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I actually kind of went a couple minutes over, uh, and I've got to get back to gardening. I hope this is informative. Again, students, take some time to think about what you want. Parents, be involved in your students' educative experience. Pay attention to what's going on. Um, and kind of demand viewpoint diversity in their experience because by allowing them to have this kind of homogenous experience, you're actually delimiting them as far as to what their overall education is gonna look like. Okay, well, have a good day. Again, this is Ryan Wasser. See you all soon.